In this video, we're going to discuss a number of different types of operating system, including distributed, embedded, multitasking, multi-user and real-time. So now you understand what an operating system is, its purpose and its roles, it's important to understand there are different flavours or types of operating system. The five you're required to know about are shown on the screen now. Let's take a look at them in a bit more detail. So multitasking operating systems. With computers, smartphones and tablets, we expect to have more than one application open at the same time. In a single processor system, each active program is scheduled to receive a tiny time slice in quick rotation, giving the impression they're operating at the same time. Even modern processors with multiple cores will still need to handle many processes at once. Now let's think about multi-user operating systems. Most operating systems you'll be familiar with from school or work allow more than one person to use a computer at the same time. The computer will manage the user's various permissions and access rights when they log on. The server operating system software will handle the requests of multiple people using different computers on the network all at once. Now let's look at distributed operating systems. You're able to combine the processing power of multiple computers across a network for a single task. In distributed computing, the operating system controls and coordinates all the computers, presenting them to the user as if they were a single system. Online shopping sites often use this form of operating system. Your basket might be handled by a particular server, while the actual querying of the site for items to search for is handled by another. As the system becomes busy with more user requests and the load increases, additional servers might automatically join the system. They're balancing the load and the requests without you ever realising that you're connecting to more than one physical computer. And now for embedded operating systems. So computers are not limited to the desktop PCs, laptops, tablets and phones that we use every day. Indeed, with the Internet of Things becoming more and more important, processors are starting to exist in almost limitless devices such as washing machines, set-top boxes, TVs, car engine management systems, home assistance, traffic lights, and much, much, much more. Embedded operating systems tend to run on very dedicated hardware, so they run with maximum efficiency. They use very low-powered processors and use little memory. They're highly specialised for the particular task they're designed for. Finally, let's look at real-time operating systems. So in safety critical environments, such as aircraft autopilot systems, hospital monitoring systems, self-drive cars, missile systems, the processes have to be guaranteed to execute within a known time frame. With these systems, plenty of redundancy is built into them so they can handle sudden increases in input. As such, processes in real-time operating systems rarely run at full capacity. Now, our final thing to appreciate here is that these five different operating system classifications we've discussed are not mutually exclusive. For example, it probably hasn't escaped you that the network that you use at school or at an office would be a multi-user system that allowed multitasking. Likewise, it'd be perfectly acceptable to have a distributed system, which was capable of multitasking and multi-users logging on at once. There'd be nothing wrong with a real-time operating system operating on a fighter jet being bedded as part of an embedded operating system. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are the features of different types of operating system?